Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. Welcome to a Friday. It is April the 24th. Glad to have you here with us as we wrap up this week with your HCC news and information. Joined this morning by a couple of special guests, but first our co-host, Brittany Pacheco, joining us from her house. Good morning, Brittany. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, everyone on Facebook. We appreciate you being here today to watch this little broadcast of ours. Be sure to like our Facebook page as well as share us share this video that way we can reach a larger audience and head over to our youtube channel by going to hccs uh, not hccs sorry youtube.com slash houston community college tv to subscribe to our channel and to hit that notification bell so you can be one of the first to find out the latest from hcc we certainly would appreciate you subscribing to our YouTube channel. Keep up to date with all of our new videos as the one we're bringing you this morning. We're live every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Central with special guests. And one of them joining us today for his Friday segment, Michael Garfield, the high tech Texan. You can see he's outdoors because he's going to be telling us about some exercise apps and devices. Good morning. Good morning. You know what? We better hurry up because I'm already sweating out here. It's going to be a big hot day today, but I got a lot of great tips for you guys. That sounds good. We'll be right with you, Michael. Thanks for being here this morning. I want to start with another special guest. This man is actually on every one of our shows that we do here on Up to the Minute uh, while we're doing these remote broadcasts because he's in the background directing the shows. I'm talking about Nathan Hale, who is a HCC TV videographer. He's a uh, producer and also an adjunct faculty member in digital communications. Good morning, Nathan. I know you're kind of busy right now because we're interviewing you, but you're also directing the show. Hi, uh, thanks, Todd. Yeah, um, it's good to be on. Um, I guess I'm always on, but um, I'm on the other side of the camera this time. Actually, I'm on both sides of the camera, which makes this uh, interesting. Uh, we'll see how it goes on my end. Uh, juggling, I, I've, I've done this a few times now uh, with other streams I've done. So um, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say it's old hat yet, but it's getting there. Well, you're doing a, a great job, you know, and a li let's give a little bit of backstory. Uh, we hired Nathan a few years ago when you were still a student here at HCC and you were uh, finishing up your degree, correct? Yes, um, I was doing work study at HCC TV, and um, I, I know I, I approached you, Todd, while I was still doing work study, asking if there were any possibilities of coming on working full time. And um, you said, based on the strength of my demo reel and my quality work, you said you could find a way to make that happen, and you did. And I, before I was even graduated from uh, Digicom with my simulation and 3D animation degree, I was hired on full time with HCC TV. Yeah, Nathan's kind of a, a guy that, that does it all, a jack of all trades. He wears a lot of hats at HCC TV, but he's been very instrumental in getting us uh, up online and delivering programming. I know you've been working with our chief broadcast engineer and also our uh, program coordinator, our production manager, Steve Luce and Chris Bourne. And you've been working behind the scenes to create this virtual online environment where we could continue our programming. Um, Let's talk to folks about how difficult of a task that was and what you've learned since you started doing that. Yeah, so to really go into this, I need to go back a little bit. Um, um, about a year ago or so, Todd, you, I'm sure, recall, after uh, winter break, I think it was, year before last, you had this idea for a podcast studio. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. That's, that's kind of outside of our normal wheelhouse, but... I'm listening. I'm interested. Uh, and that got me looking at, at different streaming platforms that use um, that podcasters often use. And one of those is Open Broadcast Studio, which we're using right now. Um, now, in the studio, we ended up going with a professional studio, uh, Pro HD from JVC, which we use there at HCC TV. And uh, Steve's been doing most of the directing there, and he's kind of taken me under wing and, and, and started to teach me how to technical direct using that platform, while simultaneously I was kind of learning OBS on my own. Um, and then, well, the whole pandemic hit, and that kind of changed how we have to do everything. Uh, we have to now work remotely. Going into the studio is no longer an option for us. So the weekend uh, prior to spring break, uh, I just decided, you know, 
uh, if we're going to continue our operations at the station, we're going to need to be able to continue doing broadcasting. And the only way I know how to do that remotely is through OBS. So I just kind of knuckled down and, and started figuring out from there. And, and there were a, a lot of challenges along the way. Um, I don't have a webcam, so I had to figure out how to make a webcam using my camera equipment. Uh, so since I have a Canon DSLR, I was able to use plug-in um, or a, a different application called SparkoCam to turn that into a webcam that OBS can recognize. Uh, there was audio concerns and issues there and so many plugins, it got to the point where I ended up just going out and buying uh, a mic that I could use with my computer more easily than my shotgun. Uh, but yeah, it's been constant challenges, but I find there's innovation out there. Uh, people have been working and figuring out workarounds for a while. And most recently with what's going on and the increased need for streaming capabilities the world over currently, uh, it's really led to some new innovations and a lot of people getting out on forums going, Hey, if you do this and you do that, we can find these and we're able to do these things. So it's been a, um, for me, it's been a very instructive time. I've, I've learned a lot and it's been interesting to take what I've been learning and bring that back to HTC TV and to my students and kind of, I don't know, I'm just keep you. things moving while we're in this remote work situation. Well, you know, the one thing I liked about working with you guys, which is great, is the fact that um, I was able to, we, were, we left and we kind of have an, had an idea that we may, things may be changing. And I, I'd asked you and Chris and Steve, I said, look, we're gonna start, have to start broadcasting from home and let's get started on this. And you guys just figured it out. You know, it was it was um, trial and error, but you worked on the platforms we needed. And literally, we didn't skip a beat, guys. You guys were able to get us on the air. And we've been broadcasting since the week of spring break. And when we came back after spring break, before the students were in class, we started doing up to the minutes live twice a day, you know. So we were, we were up and going, and now we're doing all our programming remote. Yeah, um, you know, the, that first week or so, we, we had some hiccups. We we're still trying to figure out how, how well we can make OBS work. So we we're using just WebEx to do it, which had its limitations. Um, and with, with then I think after that first week following spring break, we were able to start introducing OBS as an option for streaming. Um, and pretty much we haven't looked back. There's, there's been the occasional hiccup that occurs, but... Um, that's to be expected when you're using a, a, a lot of new technology uh, in, in a, innovative ways. So, um, but it's been yeah. good. It's been a good experience, I think. And you've been able to take this experience and translate it into the curriculum working with your students. Tell me how you've been able to do that and what's their reaction? So, yeah, I. I teach digital video one and advanced digital video and this semester in advanced digital video um, my students we were supposed to have a hands-on project at this point uh, where they would be doing compositing and green screen work um, but it's very hands-on and the, most of the students don't have access to a green screen and the like to be able to, to pull this off at home remotely so I also I took a look at where the world was currently and the advances in digital video. And the other thing they were going to be doing was 360 video. Well, we couldn't get in to use the 360 video cameras either. So I said, well, uh, uh, another way the world is moving right now is this remote broadcasting streaming. So why don't I take the real world, what I'm doing now and many in the world are doing and apply that to my classroom so they can start to learn uh, kind of the current direction in video streaming. Um, so it was me learning and teaching at the same time and i've been doing um lectures for the students that will take them through uh, bit from download to setup from troubleshooting uh to using their dslrs as uh, webcams uh cell phones as webcams and the, the great thing is the students have been uh, a number of them really embracing this. Uh, and they are, I learn as much from them during this as they do from me. Sure. Uh, Carolina, who uh, was on yesterday, yeah, she, yeah. uh, she has a Mac. So Macs operate very differently from uh, PCs when it comes to OBS and when it comes to streaming, using devices, alternate, alternate devices as webcams. So there's a lot of different applications and plugins that are necessary between the two that, are, that differ. 
So she's been my troubleshooter for uh, Mac. And in fact, she's even found some answers for Steve. So Steve can start doing some broadcasting in OBS for HCC TV since he's operating on the Mac. So um, another student of mine has just totally embraced this and he's, he's taken a step further and says how he wants to use OBS as his web stream for yeah. the webcam and he has now found virtual cam which is a plug-in for obs which you're able to now basically turn anything in your desktop into a webcam anything you put in obs which is virtually anything that is a capturable window uh so it's, it's very cool to see how the students are not only embracing this but taking it further in directions i hadn't even thought of so it's it's yeah. been fascinating well, you know, we all learn from our students, as we have done with you, you know, who come through HCC TV, because you and, and the students who follow you um, open our eyes to new ways of doing things that, like you said, we never would imagine. One thing about OBS, which is Open Broadcast System, this is a program that you found that anyone really can download for free. Now, we use WebEx, which is a paid platform, which is secured through H Houston Community College. But on the other side, for the broadcasting, you use this free software through OBS, correct? Yes, uh, OBS, yeah. it's, it's open source, so it's free. Um, it, it can be a little intensive on your system, your CPU. So you've got to have at least a decent computer to handle it. But outside of that, um, you're, you're able to use it completely free, download. Um, there's... Uh, there's not a heavy learning curve to it. It really comes down to practice and how much effort you're willing to put into the assets you include in there. As you're able, as you've seen from the, the show in the past, we can add uh, still images, overlays, uh, CGs, graphics, supers, text. Yeah. Uh, you can do live keying. Uh, it's pretty much, it's a complete TV studio right on your laptop or, or PC or desktop computer. Um, so yeah, it's it's... It's definitely out there for anyone that's interested in, in learning this. You know, I've, I've got the lectures I did on there. There's other lectures online that you'll find where people do um, tutorials. Uh, right. It's fairly simple to use. Uh, I do recommend it for those who are interested in streaming podcast, uh, doing podcasts, doing uh, game streaming. It, it can handle any of that to numerous platforms, Facebook, Twitch, uh, YouTube, so on. We'll have a link for OBS uh, in this broadcast when it's posted later. So, folks, you can look at OBS and uh, and take a look at it. But it's a free platform that our students are able to use through uh, the help of Nathan and his lectures. Nathan, um, if you would, I know you're busy, but can you stick around for the rest of the show? Or you think you're uh, you got it? Uh, yeah. I, I have a feeling I'll be here. <laughs> so once again, uh, Nathan Hale, he works for us at HCC TV. He's also an adjunct professor here at HCC. And um, he's, he's at every one of our shows we do online remotely because he's directing the show in the background. Uh, thanks for bringing us up to speed with OBS and all of your efforts. And great job to you and Steve and Chris and all of the team and uh, keeping us operating and really not missing a beat so that we can continue production on HCC TV and through all of our social media. Absolutely. And uh, one last thing, everyone, I just wanted to make appearance here. This is Jet. He's my new oh, there you go. and he's been a real lifesaver. So, yep. Well, you hear about everybody uh, adopting pets during this pandemic and uh, you've added on. So you got a new member of your family. Congratulations on Jet. Great name. Great song. Thanks. So, uh, Thanks, Nathan. Thanks for being here. We're going to uh, check in right now with Michael Garfield, the high-tech Texan, who is uh, joining us from outside, getting a little exercise. Michael, you know a lot of folks are home right now, but they're wanting to keep up their exercise. You've got some tips for them. Yeah, I do, Todd. Uh, listen, I know people are getting stir-crazy right now. And we live in a great area. I mean, look at today. It's uh, Friday morning. The sun is shining, and it's nice to be able to get out and I do want to remind you, you know, when you get out, still just listen to the rules. You got to avoid the crowds, you know, certainly keep your social distance. Obviously, yeah. now for the next 30 days, we're going to have to have those masks on. But there's still opportunities to get outside, but also to do some things inside your home because we need to be fit because all we've been doing is eating and sitting and, and working on the computer. 
Yeah, you see uh, folks po posting a lot about that, that uh, they've gained that uh, 15 pounds or so while we're in the quarantine. I've been trying to work against that myself. I run just about every day. I'm doing a lot of exercise, a lot of walking. But one thing, um, I just... I have a hard time sitting around the house and working out. I've got some equipment here, but you've got some solutions for that because you've got some uh, ideas for you, right? Yeah, I do have some ideas. And it's neat that I'm working with some companies or companies would send me some of these products to test, obviously, for my radio show and my high-tech techs and website. And one of which I've been having a lot of fun with that I spotlighted it on a uh, TV morning program a few days ago is something to help your abs. You know, our abs, our stomach, those abdominal muscles. This is something that we do not like doing. Uh, it, planking is, is relatively an understandable term. This is kind of where you just kind of like get on your feet and your toes and your elbows and you sit there and you hold it as long as you want. It's very difficult. But technology comes into play with this next one. I'm going to hold this up. This is a device called the Stealth Fitness Board. And if you can see the whole thing over here, it weighs only about six or seven pounds. Very wow. portable. You can take it anywhere you want. And what I do is I put it right inside uh, my house wherever I go. But the neat thing is there's a little insert right here. And what it's for, it's for your smartphone. You download an app and you put your smartphone right inside here. And what you do is you look at your phone while you're planking on this board and you're playing a virtual video game and your body becomes the controller. So you can down, actually it's not downloadable, but it's live online. And so you can play Galaxy Fighter, there's archery, there's miniature golf, and what you do is you control the board left and right. And let me help you out. You sit here and you do this for a few minutes. You're not realizing you're working your abs until you get off a little later in the day. But it works really well, and that's just one little thing to keep your mind off you doing exercise, but it's a pretty neat invention. That's pretty cool. I saw you post a picture of that the other day, and it looked like a foot pedal because I couldn't tell how big the device was until you showed it on camera. Yeah, it's not bad. It runs about $99, and you know, I ordered it online. It came to my house probably in about three or four days, and you're finding a lot of companies doing this right now. You know, you, you think about the fitness products. Look at the Peloton. The Peloton is extremely popular. You know, that's the bicycle, you know, plus the app. The bike alone, that, that baby is well over $2,000, Then you have to have the monthly subscription. So it's nice to find relatively yeah. more inexpensive, cheaper things to do that than the Peloton. Yeah. And tell me about some of the other equipment, because I, I saw you working with something with for your chest a little while ago. <laughs> this is nice. I, I stole this one from my son, Josh, because Josh is really big into video games. And a lot of students at ACC, you have video games. You have the Nintendo, you have Xbox or whatever. This is something called the Nintendo Switch Ring Fit Adventure. This is a, a specific game and an add-on accessory if you have that Nintendo Switch. And what it does, it gets you up and around working out your muscles. And so what it does, it's, it's kind of a bendable, flexible little device. You put the Nintendo Switch controller right in here. And what it does, you go through an adventure. It's like, you know, you're chasing, you know, uh, and shooting and you're killing, you know, kind of like these first person shooter games. Yeah. But what you can do, it bends and you flex and there's different exercises and you can adjust the resistance on this thing. So not only can you do your upper body, and I'm going to back up here for you a little, Todd, you can put this in between your legs and you can squeeze yeah. the whole thing. But it's a neat game that puts your mind into another faction where you're not really concentrating on the fact that you're working out. You're actually playing a game. This runs about $80, this add-on kit. But as my son says, if you can find it anywhere online, you'll probably have to pay a little bit more, probably on eBay. But it's a neat little add-on to Nintendo's game, uh, the, uh, the Switch. And I imagine, some, like you said, something like that's selling out pretty quickly now that we're all stuck at home. Yeah, this has been on the market for quite a while. That's why it's really tough to find on our store shelves. And so I may recommend you probably go on eBay. You look for the Nintendo Switch Ring Fit Adventure. And it's really fun for the whole family. And you know what? For people who are normally sedentary, who normally don't get out, they just do watch video games. It was neat to see my kids sitting there doing fun stuff like this right in front of their computer monitors. You know, um, going old school, uh, because I used to use this app a long time ago. Nowadays, of course, I use my Garmin, and my Garmin app, and I use Strava, yep. But Map My Run, they're still around, still popular, and still doing the same thing, huh? I love this. You know what? I, I kind of added this one because I know you're a runner. I'm a runner, so I'm sporting one of my marathon, uh, yeah. you can marathon run shirts over here. I like to track exactly where I'm going and keep a history of it. You know, nowadays we can do this on so many of our watches, our Garmin's, our, our uh, their Fitbits and what have you. But Map My Run is actually owned by Under Armour. They bought that many, many years ago. But what it does, it keeps, uh, keeps track of every single one of your runs through GPS. And it's neat because I went through my Map My Run 
uh, last night when I was putting this piece together, I saw something go back from 2013. And so, but it shows, you know, how fast you're going, what your breakdown, what your pace is. But it also, the neat thing I like about this is the mapping part of it, because I can go on map my run and I, it's got a really GPS but anywhere in the world. And I can actually take my mouse and start tracing which route I want to go. And it'll show me exactly to the 10th of a mile, how far I can plan my route out. And so it's neat. It's a free thing too. It's called map my run. It's a nice little app. I haven't used that in years, but that's probably one I'll have to connect and start uh, taking a look at. So some others that you have, I wanted to talk about um, Zombies Run. What is this one all about? This is actually, this is bigger than I even realized, again, as a runner. This, there's over 1 million people around the world who use this app, Todd. Um, what it is, it's, it's about $6 a month, and you download it, but it's another one of these kind of virtual games that keeps you motivated other than running. People think, oh, my God, running, 26.2 miles. There's no way I'm going to keep my mind into it. Yeah. What you do is you download this app, and you hook up some earphones, earbuds, like most everybody does when they're running, but you start listening to missions. And the missions is you've got to start running away from zombies. It's like a zombie apocalypse. And so, and so you can gather supplies, you can rescue survivors, you can defend your home, but you don't have to run. You can also walk too. And if you're chased by zombies, guess what, Todd? You've got to speed up. And so it's a nice little game that keeps your mind into it. Something, something different. But I didn't have, realize it was so big. People around the world are challenging each other. Well over a million people. I thought that was pretty funny. Wow. And that, sound, that sounds pretty cool. So that's about six bucks a month for that one. It is. That's six bucks. There's some free ones also, too. You know, it's really nice seeing companies who are opening up their, sometimes their premium work yeah. off per month, and now they're letting it for free. Well, you know, YouTube is a treasure trove of a lot of things that you could do for not only how to, but there's a lot of lessons. I was on YouTube last night, and I was just looking at, you know, fitness or at home keeping in shape. I found one or two or three or 5,000 of them, one of which I like. It's called Pop Sugar, Pop Sugar Fitness. Yeah. Normally, you know, normally, there's a fee. This one for right now, they've opened it up to, for everybody. And you can go online and you can follow these classes. Some of them are 15 minutes. Some of them are 30 minutes. Everything from Pilates to yoga to high-intensity training. Um, so you can just follow the leader. Um, I kind of recommend, obviously, if you can just stream this to your TV, um, maybe in your living room, where you have a nice area so you can sit here and you can move and you can bounce around and do some things versus looking at it on your phone. But take a look at YouTube because they have a lot of offerings of these right now free. Normally, they're generally as cause of, of, of how-to videos where you can kind of keep in shape and follow the leader. What about the Fitbit? Is that still popular as well? You know what? We talk about these, these watches. I've said this for a long time. You know, when these first things came out, when, he, when he Fitbits and whatever, um, the thing is, though, people think, well, let's see, I'm going to walk 10,000 steps today. That's my goal. Now I get to go eat a meal. Now I can have a bottle yeah, of wine or yeah. whatever. Not the point. What it does is really you got to actually put your mind in the game. If you walk 10,000 steps one day, you need to walk 11,000 steps the next day, yeah. 12,000. That's my mind, and that's the way that I think. Right? But Fitbit, for one, obviously it, it was just actually sold to another company about a year or so ago, but they've got a premium version right now. So if you, once you go buy the watch, you actually can – you know, pay a monthly fee, and I think it's less than ten dollars a Fitbit premium. But what it does, it's a trainer, and so it does have the GPS, and you also can download programs into your phone to go through your Fitbit, to go to your ears, that'll tell you when to speed up and when to go down. You know, we're really reliant uh, right now, especially when you run marathons, of our watch. It tells us a lot of things. It can measure your heart rate and, and whatever. Yeah. But Fitbit, um, Garmin, um, I'm a big Samsung. This is the new Sam, the Samsung uh, watch. There's so many out there. Obviously, don't forget the Apple watch, too. But there's so many out there. But, you know, if you download some programs on here, a lot of them are free. They really do help. And it's immediate feedback because it's right there on your wrist. Michael Garfield, the high-tech Texan. Um, we, of course, uh, are proud partner with you guys and we're going to be on your show tomorrow talking about our H force for folks who want to tune into your show where can they do that it's every Saturday on 950 a.m. here in the Houston area also everywhere around the world on the iHeartRadio app but it's 11 in the morning central time it's two hours and it's very fun I take live questions and calls I talk about gear like this and just give you some neat ideas but it's great to be able to partner with HCC to keep everybody up to date during these kind of crazy times Absolutely. We look forward to talking to you tomorrow, and thanks for being here on the show this morning, and enjoy the weather outside. It's a great day. I'm going to go run it now once we sign off. There you go. <laughs> Have a good one, Michael. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Todd. I'm joined now by Brittany Pacheco, my co-host. Brittany, thanks for being here on the show, and uh, what's going on in social media this morning? 
Hey, Todd. Well, actually, we've been getting some comments uh, in regards to our guests this morning from Nathan, about Nathan and uh, Michael Garfield. So uh, one comment is, congratulations, Nathan, for having Jet, because let's just face it, Jet is adorable. Everyone needs a Jet in their life. And Everyone. I want to meet him. I want, I want to meet him and have my dog Luna see how they interact with one another, how they play. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. We'll have to see how that goes. Yeah, that, I could have a feeling that could go south real fast. <laughs> I, th I think I think uh, at some point a play date's definitely in order for the two. After yeah, when this is over, I'm sure there'll be a lot of play dates going on. As folks want to get back out, so um, pets don't need to social distance, though, from what I understand. As long as they uh, hang out with their humans, they don't need to social distance. Well, you know, they say that uh, that people own dogs, but it's cats who own people. So Nathan, keep us abreast of what happens with a. Uh, your relationship with Jet. <laughs> yeah, let us know how uh, he, uh, he he diverts your life. I know uh, my dogs would take offense to what you said there, Brittany. They, uh, they certainly think they own me, and uh, they, they prove it on a daily basis. Um, so we're getting some comments on on Nathan. That's good to hear in, in social media. Um, a, a lot of the questions we've noticed though, over the last two weeks have really gone down in social media because folks seem to be using that virtual lobby. They absolutely have, Todd, and I'm really glad that you mentioned the virtual lobby because we did have a question from Twitter. It was actually a follow-up question from someone who had messaged us a while back about refund status. And yeah. as always, students, uh, we know that all of this has been very trying, and it's a very different world that we live in right now, and especially when it comes to your education. So we know questions like refunds, financial aid, and things like that are of the utmost importance in your life. So be sure that you head over to our HCC homepage and you can click on in the green uh, uh, tab or green bar at the top of where it says virtual lobby or even at the bottom. There is a form where you can ask your very specific questions pertaining to your needs. Uh, it ranges from all different departments, be it the cashier's office, financial aid, testing, counseling, you name it, it's there. So be sure you utilize that resource. Uh, it's right there at your fingertips. When you send that form, you will hear back from an HCC team member as soon as possible. Yeah, and I'm uh, showing them the homepage now as we speak, so you can uh, see where exactly this virtual lobby is. And it's clicked at the bottom. You just click on that, and it's going to take you to a page where you can fill out your information. So it's very easy. It does, uh, it, you, you can get very specific in what you want to say. Oh, let's put my video back on and turn that off. But you can ver get very specific on what you need to, uh, to get information on. And it's confidential because a lot of times when you do post something social media, it may be, may be very uh, sensitive information that you need to know about and you don't want to share with the world. So uh, that's what this virtual lobby is for to answer those personalized questions exactly what you need to know. Um, another thing folks need to realize is we've got our summer registration underway and we're about to kick off the fall registration. That's right, Todd. We're about to enter May in just a couple of weeks and the very first uh, Monday in May, you will actually be able to register for fall 2020 courses. So be sure you head over to our homepage or go to hccs.edu slash now where you can check out our course listings for both summer and eventually for uh, fall 2020. Yep, and we've got, uh, we know that we're going to be delivering courses online throughout the summer, and we will have, hopefully, we're keeping our fingers crossed that we'll be back in the buildings in the fall and we can see each other in person, but uh, we'll do, uh, we'll be following, of course, the federal, state, and city and county guidelines as to when we can get back into our buildings. And, and uh, seems things seem to be lightening up a bit, Brittany. I don't know what the feeling is over at your house. But uh, it seems to be a lot more optimism this week as we're as we're heading into it. I don't know if this is the home stretch or the final stretch, but it to me, I just feel like things are are starting to change. You know, I think it's it varies for everyone. Uh, I myself don't really identify as being an optimist, but at this stage in this pandemic, I think we all need to hold on to some sort of optimism about, hey, we're going to get through this eventually. You know. Hopefully it's the home stretch, but at the same time, we all still need to exercise that caution about social distancing, 
making sure you're washing your hands, follow what the city officials have to say about wearing the mask. You guys know that my mom has been making masks yeah. for everyone in the family. Um, we're still waiting on a shipment for elastic because we found that using some of their alternatives are just not as well, not as great as uh, elastic, even though, you know, Velcro is, is awesome. It can kind of get stuck in your hair and especially when yeah, you have hair fun. such as myself or, you know, other individuals. Um, it's just easier to use that elastic to go around your ears. So we're waiting on that. Hopefully we'll get that shipment soon and hopefully she'll be able to crank out more masks in the near future. We are, one thing we want to let folks know before we go, because we're going to have to wrap up, but we want to let you know that our online graduation is still scheduled. It's coming up and we want to recognize our graduates. On May 22nd will be the online graduation ceremony. So we, we appreciate our graduates. We recognize you for your special day. And if you can't make the online version, you are going to be certainly allowed to participate in the winter 2020 graduation. When we have that, you can walk the stage then. Definitely. So graduates, if you have any questions pertaining to uh, what Todd just shared about spring 2020 uh, commencement ceremonies, it is going to be virtual. Go over to hccs.edu slash graduation. All the information and very important information will be right there. So again, go to hccs.edu slash graduation. Well, Brittany, thanks again for being here, and we'll see you on Monday. Have a good weekend. It looks like it might be some good weather, so try to get outside and keep your social distance. Oh, yeah. I definitely plan on taking my little pup outside to go run around and, and play. She's gotten a little chunky, so we're going to exercise her. <laughs> it's called fluffy. They're just she's getting a little fluffy. That's what you want to say. That the dogs don't like chunky, if that is a word. I've been taking ours out, and they've been going for walks. And uh, they told us uh, thank you, but they'd rather stay home instead of going for these long walks. One of them, I thought he was going to have a heart attack when he was outside. He was just a, he was he the little one. He just likes to run. And at the end of the day, I realized how out of shape he is. So there we go. Thanks for joining us on Up to the Minute. Uh, Nathan, good to have you here as always. And thanks to our special guest, Michael Garfield. We will see you on Monday. We've got a great show lined up for you then. Have a good weekend. Try to get outside, get some great fresh air, and watch that social distancing, but enjoy yourself. We'll see you again.